this way. Some of us went yesterday and had a good time. There were a lot of people there at the tent that we had set up. A lot of food served at breakfast and at noon and then again yesterday evening. It was our church and several other churches partnering together, cooking and feeding the campers. Some of the people were very interesting. I enjoyed talking to some of them. <clears throat> Maybe in the fall, some more of you can join and be a part of it. I know Kenneth always goes and Paula always goes and works. There were several people yesterday at breakfast and at noon that accepted Christ. There were a lot of campers that came from all of different states. I met one couple from Arizona, a couple from Maryland. They're, from, they're just from all different areas. They follow the race around the different races. Anyway, it was interesting to see all the various people, to see the different people that God created. That's why our world is so interesting, because we are all so different, not all the same. Our needs are not the same, but His love is the same for all of us. His love meets all of our needs. Now today, we're going to continue our study from the book of Luke. We're in chapter 7. We're going to complete chapter 7 today. We're going to do verses 36 to 50. There was a man who had lost two people, 
religious leaders that would often get together in the afternoon and share food together and talk about theology, biblical things. And as they were having their discussion, there was a Pharisee named Simon who invited Jesus to come to his house for a meal. Why the Pharisee invited Jesus to his house? Doesn't really say. But it's part of their culture during that time was that if someone came into your house that you were greet them with a kiss. We're not talking about a romantic kiss, but just a type of kiss that greeted someone. And then also they were to wash their feet. <coughs> Back during those days, you know, they didn't have shoes like we had. They wore sandals and they had to do a lot of walking. Their feet became dirty. And then sometimes when you come to my home, when you come in, you know, we take our shoes off. Well, we've got socks on or no socks, it doesn't matter. I know my daughter, when we go to Amanda's house, she's taught Parker to take her shoes off. And Parker always comes in. It's something that was funny recently that happened. 
we went to debut camp and we stayed at the Rye House. It's, a, it's not a fancy place. It's clean, but it's not fancy, not like their home. You know, people go in and out there. <coughs> they go in and out the staff houses there and they sit down on the floor. And they, Parker just went in the door and immediately sat down and took her shoes off. It doesn't matter where she's at. She goes in the door, she takes her shoes off. But anyway, that was the custom during that day, to wash their feet. And the third custom was to anoint them with oil. If a person came into my home, I was to wash his feet and anoint his head with oil. And to greet them with a kiss, to show them honor, to show respect, to welcome them to my home. Like I said, the second thing was to wash their feet, to have them feel refreshed, and to anoint them with oil, to help them feel also refreshed. You know, often if, when they were outside, it was if, you know, maybe it was hot and humid. We've been outside sitting and discussing the scriptures. And so when they came into a home, they did those things before they shared their meal together. But there was a woman who, who came. woman knew who she came to see. She, she knew and went directly to Jesus and knelt down and wept. She wept so much that tears washed Jesus' feet. She dried them with her hair. She kissed his feet. That woman showed a strong love of the Lord. She knew who Jesus was. She knew that Jesus had helped her. And in the verse it says that the woman was a sinner. We think that maybe the woman had been a prostitute. It doesn't specifically say. But the verse does say that the woman was a sinner. And that Jesus welcomed the woman. He didn't reject her or send her away. But he accepted the love that she was showing, the respect she was showing. The woman realized that her sins, her awful sins, had been forgiven. Her many sins had been forgiven. And at the end of the verse, the verse says that the woman had many sins and that Jesus had forgiven her. Woman didn't go to Pharisees or the other religious leaders. She went directly to Jesus. Now, when you and I have problems, you know, when we really feel overwhelmed with our problems, we need, we need, should we go to a person or should we go directly to God? It's important that you and I have a relationship with God and that we can go to Him. The woman knew that Jesus had helped her. She knew. She had heard many stories about Jesus, but she also knew what He had done for her. She knew that man. She knew who Jesus was. And she knew that she needed Him and not others. There was a man that owed another man 500 coins, and there was a man that owed 50. One coin was 
is equal to a day's wages. And the man who owed 500 coins means that he owed 500 days worth of work. And the man who owed 50 coins, he owed 50 days worth of work. Neither man could afford to pay back his debt. <coughs> But the man who loaned the money forgave them both, forgave their debts. And Jesus asked the Pharisees, he asked Simon, which of these two men do you think loved the most or was more grateful? And Simon said, I think the man that owed more, the one that owed 500, would be more grateful. Jesus said, you're right. And this woman has shown so much love. She used that Jesus had forgiven her sins that were horrible, and that Jesus could help her. Jesus forgave the many sins that she had. The woman understood how important, how important Jesus was and how much mercy he had shown, how much love he had shown, forgiveness. It was not her own work. It was not, not because she washed his feet or put perfume on his feet. It was not anything that she had done. But Jesus said, your faith has saved you. Your faith has healed you. Now the Pharisee had invited Jesus to his home, but only to, to uh, receive him, you know, only to catch him in something that he was using him. Jesus often was teaching and telling stories to crowds of people. Maybe the woman had noticed Jesus before, how he had healed. And she realized who Jesus was, how he, was, how he forgave sin. And Jesus can take away your sins and my sins. And then your life can be relieved until you can have peace. Be free of your sins. The, the Pharisee thought that maybe Jesus was a false prophet. You know, the Pharisee was judging the woman that is a sinner. You and I, as Christians, we should not judge and look down on other people. I was talking to a woman recently. She needed some help. I didn't say anything. I just said, I said, well, why didn't you ask for help? She said, well, I didn't want people to judge me. We need to show love and kindness and forgiveness. Just like Jesus did. Jesus is inside of us. His spirit is inside of us. And we need to reflect that love, that mercy. We need to give people forgiveness. We need to forgive others so we can receive forgiveness. He was willing to forgive us. We need to be willing to forgive others. Maybe the Pharisee didn't know who Jesus really was. Or why Jesus was there. What he had come for. Why he was teaching. Where did he get his power? The Pharisee didn't really know Jesus. Didn't really know him. Didn't really know him as God's son. The other Pharisees, they were opposed to Jesus. <clears throat> you 
to realize that you and I, we're sinners. Maybe some of our sins are worse. Maybe you think, oh, I just sin a little bit. You know, just a little bit. Other people's sins are worse than mine. <clears throat> yeah, we kind of look at sins of, on different levels. But we, you know, maybe we judge a person on their sins being bigger than our sins. But there's, there's no sin bigger than another in our sight. The woman felt such relief that Jesus had forgiven her. And she wanted to show her love. Not to pay him, to give him the money, but she wanted to show her love through her actions. You know, Jesus doesn't want our money. He wants us to have a relationship with him and to have a relationship with others. He wants us to show love. We can show Jesus' love through helping others, through our relationship with others, through supporting each other. That's how we can show the love of Christ. That's how we can reflect His light. By becoming like Him. Now this Pharisee, the Bible says, talks about the woman loving so much. And the man loving less. You know, the, Jesus told the story about the man who had 500 coins and the man who had 50. That relates to us. You know, sometimes we have many sins. We can't count them. You know, since we've been born up to now, you, you know, how many sins have you committed? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, you've committed many sins over the years of your life. Daily we sin. Jesus took upon himself your sins on the cross. He, he, he took your sins and my sins, and all of them, not just some of them, not just half of them, not just the sins of the past, but he took on the sins of the past, the now, and the future. You know, if I count my sins, and, you know, there were hundreds up to now, maybe a thousand, how I many, we don't know how many sins we've committed. There's too many to count. I can't count all the sins I've committed. You know, it'd be more than the sand on the beach. You know, you're, you're like me. You've got a lot of sin in your life, too. We all have many sins we've committed. None of us are perfect. We're all sinners. We need to be careful. Sometimes, we talk about things being right or wrong. We talk about things being right or wrong, but we don't like to discuss sin. But sin is real. And you and I have sin in our lives. You know, we can list all these good things that we do. And we can notice all these things that are wrong in other people's lives. But sin real. Sin is real. And we have sin inside of us. We have sin that we commit daily. We try to hide our sins. But we can't hide our sins from God. Maybe our sin, maybe our friends don't see our sin. You know, maybe we can hide them from our wives and our children. But we have sin and God sees them. He knows our sins. And he's willing to forgive. And we need to be careful not to be judgmental of other people. And think that our sins are not as bad as theirs. Some people think their sins or their lives are so bad, so terrible, that God can't forgive them. He can't love them. But the Bible tells us that he does. The Bible doesn't say, I think forgive sin up into this limit, and after that, you're on your own. No. The Bible says that He forgave all our sins. But 
we must have faith. The woman who washed Jesus' feet and, and took the perfume and showed the picture. That's not what saved her. The last verse said, Your faith, your faith saves you. Now go. Go in peace. In Matthew chapter 8, there was a Roman soldier who went to Jesus. He said, one of my servants is sick. Can you come and heal me? And then he said, you just need to speak the word. I'm a man of authority. And when I tell my soldiers to go, they go. When I tell them to come, they come. And they obey me. And you. You only have to speak your word. And Jesus said, whoa, your faith is more than all that I see in this there is none that has the faith to say, Gee, now go. Your servant is healed. You know, there were four friends. There was a man who was crippled, who was unable to walk. His friends walked into the house where Jesus was teaching. Friends approached the house and couldn't get through the door. There was such a crowd. They did, they thought about what they could do. So they climbed up to the roof of the house, made an opening, and lowered their friend down in front of Jesus. When Jesus looked at the friend, he said, your, your faith and your friend's faith is so strong. Get up, roll up your mat, and walk. They showed faith. Your faith. Where? Where is your faith? Do you doubt or do you have strong faith in Christ? He tells us that He will do everything that He has promised and that we only need to trust Him. We only have to have simple faith. It's not always easy. You know, when we are, when we're faced with problems and conflicts, we think about all these things that we can do. We need to know that he's always with us and that he is strong and that we need to depend on him. We need to think and have faith and believe in Christ. I hope that today your faith is strong. Sometimes we wait. I know Daniel, as he went to fly, I know Stephanie is trusting, Daniel is trusting that he'll be able to return. And God will allow him to come back in three weeks, right? So it's not four weeks. He's already been there a week, so we've got three more weeks. And he's going to be flying home. We have faith and trust that he'll be able to come back. Daniel's not down. He's got faith. And he believes. As he went, he, he held on to his faith. You know, the Bible tells us that we have faith the size of a mustard seed. But that's enough. We don't have to have this gigantic portion of faith. We just have to believe and trust in Christ. And he will do everything that he has promised. He, will, he has promised to be with us always. I hope you pray this morning that God's word has touched you. And I pray that the Lord will touch your heart and that your faith will continue to grow. You know, sometimes you doubt, sometimes we doubt. We have to pray that God will help our faith to be strong and turn our attention to Him. We need to pray often. We will continue in relationship and to grow in his presence so that our faith will be strong. We need to pray for each other. Now this morning I want you to have some time and think quietly to yourselves. If there's something you need to make a decision about, 
if you need stronger faith, if you feel like your faith is weak, you want to come and pray. You know, I'm here, Bob's here, there's others here that can pray with you. This is your time. We're going to dim the lights and you think quietly to yourselves about your relationship with God. Thank you. 